Good evening and welcome to our winter band concert. My name is Kayla Peard and I'm the band director here at Noble High School. Our first ensemble you just heard was our eighth grade band performing Flashpoint by Tyler Arcari. Before we continue, we do have a few housekeeping items to go over. Please make sure that anything that makes sound is turned off. Our students are the ones creating the music tonight and we want to give all of our attention to them. Also, please refrain from talking or whispering while the students are performing. What might seem quiet to you spreads very well in this auditorium, and we don't want to impact another audience's member's experience negatively. In your programs, you will see a small piece of paper with a snowman on it. Please feel free to fill them out and place them in the collection baskets on the sides of the auditorium. We love to hang these notes of encouragement up for our students in our hallway. It's a visual representation of their concert experience, and once this night is over, they can look back and see the support from their friends and family. There is also some select program notes with descriptions about the pieces we are performing or about the composers who wrote them. Now, back to the music. Our next piece for eighth grade band is The Haunted Carousel by Erica Svano. Dr. Svano actually has ties to New England um, as she served as the director of athletic bands at UNH and was actually my summer youth music school conductor one year uh, when I was in high school. She maintains an active schedule as a composer, writing music for band and chamber ensemble. Her first major work was The Haunted Carousel, which we were performing, and it won the 2014 MBA Young Band Composition Contest and was featured at the Midwest Clinic and the CBDNA Southern Division Conference. The Haunted Carousel was conceived as a piece for band utilizing the sound of a theremin, an electronic instrument often used in old science fiction and horror movies. It is also one of the only instruments that is played without touching it. The antennas send out electronic waves that create pitches depending on the location you hold your hands closer to it and further away will bend pitches. Unfortunately, they are not that common, especially in high schools, so Dr. Savano designed the part to be played on an iPad. So you'll be hearing that tonight. And we now bring you The Haunted Carousel. Thank you. 
I would like to take a minute to thank our four eighth grade band mentors who have worked with the students this semester. So these are high school students um, who have a study hall or tutorial during their class and instead of going there, they're signed up as a band mentor to come and work with them. Um, whether that's helping run sectionals or playing different parts or even performing tonight in the concert. So I'd like to thank um, Elsa Christensen, Gavin Byrne, Ash Fecto, and Ian Lowry. And I would also like to acknowledge that we do have three ninth graders performing with the eighth grade band. Um, when their schedules were made back in the spring and fall, they had some conflicts that were unable to adjust. So instead of taking a year off, these students decided to play with the eighth grade full time. Um, they have been great to have in the ensemble and have been role models in their sections. So thank you, Colin McAvoy, Felix Rothwell, and Lauren Jordan. And our final eighth grade piece today is Darkland's March by Randall Standridge. Standridge is a conductor, clinician, drill designer, music arranger, and color guard designer for the marching arts, as well as composer, conductor, and arranger for the concert band world. He is in high demand, putting out hundreds of pieces of music. His current focus is on the discussion of mental health and using music as a means of expression for that. The piece we're playing today, though, however, is not a part of that series that he's working on. It was composed eight years ago, and it's based on a series of short stories that he wrote, and I reached out to him, and he said he's going to be publishing them on the 10-year anniversary of this piece. So in about two years, his inspiration, his wrote, words he wrote, will actually get to read them at that point in time. Um, Darkland's March is the first movement of a five-movement suite. We focus quite a bit on dynamics and articulations when we worked on this, so please enjoy Darkland March, movement one of the Darkland Suite.
What a Wonderful World was written by George David Weiss and Bob Thiel in 1967. The country was involved in both the Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement, and Weiss and Thiel wanted to bring some sense of reconciliation to the nation. Louis Armstrong was the first to record this piece. Since then, there have been many different versions and adaptions. Today, we are performing the arrangement made by Alan Baylock. Baylock added a few new harmonies and turned it into a 12-8 feel, which gave our students a chance to play in a new time signature. The NHS Jazz Ensemble will now perform What a Wonderful World. I would like to take a moment to announce that tomorrow I have the pleasure of traveling to Bangor High School for three days for the main Allstate Jazz Festival with two of our noble students. Ash Fecto will be performing on bass with the mixed choir and Miles Plummer will be performing on drums with the jazz combo. Miles' score was also the highest score in the state of Maine on drum set this year. So please join me in congratulating them. Our final piece from the Jazz Ensemble tonight is Blue Rondo a la Turk by Dave Brubeck. Brubeck's style ranged from refined to bombastic, reflecting both his mother's classical training 
and his own improvisational skills. He expressed elements of atonality and fugue. Brubeck with um, Paul Desmond used elements of West Coast jazz near the height of its popularity, combining them with the unorthodox time signatures seen in their um, album Time Out. The piece we are playing tonight is Blue Rondo a la Turk, and it is written in 9-8 time with a side theme in 4-4. Four, four. And the choice of rhythm was inspired by the Turkish Aksak time signature. Aksak time signatures are ones that aren't evenly distributed into a beat. Our traditional 9-8 would be a 3 plus 3 plus 3 feel. Blue Rondo a la uh, Turk, however, has a 9-8 feel that feels like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3. So I know that sounds weird if you don't know music, but you're going to kind of feel that it's not quite settling evenly. Um, tonight, it will feature a variety of solos, including dueling berry saxes from Ian Lowry and Trevor Beans, a trumpet solo by Trevor Patterson, and the famous saxophonist Paul Desmond's part played by Nick Adam and Savannah Surwick. Here is Blue Rondo a la Turk.
Test, there we go. Uh, Fantasy on a Japanese Folk Song is a programmatic work written by Samuel Hazo. It tells the story of a Japanese girl who is given a music box by her mother and father when she is just a child. This music box played the Japanese child song, Sunayama. As a young girl, this music box always provided a sense of comfort and solace during her trying times. When she becomes an adult, she falls in love with an American and faces the choice of staying in her Japanese village or marrying and going back to America with him. She is so very much in love with him that she chooses to leave. However, she later realizes the need to feel close to her culture and part of her always wonders if there was a life for her in her native Japan. As time goes by, the sense of conflict, which was more easily suppressed in the beginning, surfaces with more intensity, proving that only in a woman's heart can there exist an inner love and an inner war simultaneously. Balancing her love for her husband with her love for her culture that she left behind gives way to painful episodes. During these moments, her only method of coping with her circumstances to lock herself away, open the music box given to her as a child, and at the sound of the very first note to cry. The symphonic band will now perform fantasy on a Japanese folk song.
Um, as we are changing around, um, I would like to take a moment to thank you all for attending tonight. Before we get to our last piece, I have a few reminders and announcements. First, please make sure to fill out the snowman that is in your program. There's also some pens with the baskets um, so we can display your words of encouragement on our music wing walls. We also have clink bags that you can take, fill up, and bring to a Hannaford clink location. The money raised helps us buy instruments, music, and bring in guest artists. Uh, next week, we are hosting the District 1 Music Festival. We are still looking for some parent volunteers for certain tasks, along with some more donated items. Please check the Sign Up Genius if you are able to help. And this is one of our two big fundraisers, with the second one being Nobles Got Talent in March. Also, at the conclusion of the concert, if we could have students help bring percussion instruments back to the band room and stack stands and chairs, that would help Mr. Eaton and his crew out greatly. So now it's time for our final piece. Time Streams, after Tricycle, was composed by Dr. Andrew Boysen Jr., who is the director of bands at UNH. We were fortunate enough to have Dr. Boysen visit with us last week and work on the piece with the symphonic band. He was able to tell us more about his compositional process and why he wrote parts the way he did, or things he wished he could change. Um, the piece Time Streams was inspired by his earlier piece, Tricycle. Dr. Boysen wanted to take the same starting material and the same climactic moments and do a reset of the rest. He thought of it as a what if. The original piece, Tricycle, was happy, light, and playful. This new piece, however, takes the listener on a different path and is a more transformational journey. Thank you again for coming tonight and enjoy time streams. <laughs> Thank you. 